Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to recap a bit of uh, currying. So we're going to remember a bit of, do a few exercises to see if everyone is on board. Um, so this is an example of um, Python, just to kind of remind you of what uh, currying is. And Python is a language that is not curried or doesn't enable curry by default. So when you have a function, for instance, that takes two uh, parameters, and you call it with just one, you would get an error. That's uh, very common in like in C or in Java, you'll get an error if you call a function with a number of arguments that it's not expecting. But in some languages, um, that is not an error, it's actually a feature. Uh, so for instance, in Haskell, if you define addition uh, with two parameters, x and y, uh, this is how you define a function. Uh, and in on the right-hand side of the equals, you put the body of the function, uh, in this case, we're just returning x plus y. So it's just su simple binary addition. Um, if we call it with just the number 10, what we created is a function um, that now takes the y value, and when given the y value, it adds it to 10. Because you've, you've passed, you've assigned um, 10 to x. And this is a bit, uh, possibly a bit surprising. That is not an error and that it's indeed a feature, uh, but this is how the language works. And if you're programming in Haskell, that is expected behavior. So not uh, so completely acceptable and not surprising. Um, okay, so we can do the same thing in Racket and we saw this example in our last lesson. So let me just copy paste this example. So code curry one dot Racket. And I'm gonna paste this. Um, and actually, let me just define a function. Uh, let's say it adds three. Uh, and I take an X and Y and a Z. And what I do is uh, plus, oops, plus X, Y, and Z. All right, so if I call, um, let me do require rec unit right in the beginning. Uh, what I did was I created a function that adds three numbers together uh, and I can confirm that it does what it's supposed to do. So one, two, and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, no. One, three, five. So the first three odd numbers. Okay, so let's do add three. One, three, five. Okay, and I'm expecting the result to be the same. Uh, so let me comment this out. Okay, so it's working, uh, as you can check. If I print out the result, you'll see it here. Okay, it's nine, so it's fine. Uh, next thing I can do is I can get the, the find the curried add, which is currying uh, add three. Okay, and now what we have is a function that will first take X and that will return a function that will then take Y will take return yet another function that will finally take Z and return the, the result. compute the results. So how do we do this? We do define add three. So let's say we want to do add one and then we want to do add one, oops, curry add. And then we do carried five. Uh, if we do this, what we get is three functions, right? One where we assign one to x, one where we assign three to x, and finally here where we assign uh, five to x. But that's not what we want. Ideally, we would want to show you this same example here. So for that, let's uh, define add um, where we take one. And we can do curry add, right? And then if I want to do add one and three together, I do uh, add one and then I do three. And if I want to add one, three, and five, I just call it with five. Of course, these names, they do not matter, right? It could be anything. So first, let, let me show you that this indeed does what it's supposed to do. Run it again, I see nine, right? So I can check equal. 
So the same as um, add three, one, three, and five. Right. And of course this name doesn't matter, so I could say v1 and this would be v2 and here I could do v, v2, v1 right? and here I would do v2 and I would get the same value. Additionally, if I define, um, define uh, v3 as v1 and 10, now what I'm doing is check equal v3 to be uh, 12. This is the same as add 3, where I add, assign, uh, so v1, so I assign 1 to x, and then I assign um, 10 to y, and finally I assign 12 to z, right, because it's here, uh, so 12. Mm, errors, parenthesis, parenthesis, I forgot here. Okay, and everything is working. So what I'm trying to say here, and, and then we can also see how do we call curried one without intermediate, um, without intermediate values? Well, we have to do it like so. And five, and then we can even do a check equal where this is the same as calling at three, one, three, five, right? So it's equivalent to you call it once and that returns a function or you have to call it again. You pass the third argument and finally you get the results. Okay, this is mostly what I wanted to show you guys. So this is just a recap of what currying is. Um, again, this is the recursive definition if you wanted to implement it you would need to define a function with three parameters where one would be the function you're currying. Uh, the second one would be the, um, the number of arguments you're expecting. Um, and the last thing would be the accumulated uh, list of arguments. And then what you would do is once you have all the arguments, when you get to the base case, so you finally have zero left, uh, then you can call your function with all the arguments that were stored so far in the accumulator plus the one that is given. Uh, there's still a question, how do I call a function in the list of things? Uh, for that, you would need to learn about a function of record called apply, but that's kind of besides the point. It's mostly to start giving you a feel of how we define things recursively, which will be important for instance, in basically all homework starting from or three. Okay, so now let's look at this example where we defined uh, another curried add, and it takes a lambda, arc one, a lambda, arc two, and then what it does at the end is it adds them together. So this is, again, a curried binary addition. So we have this example where we initialized curried add with 10, and then we initialized, in assigned to B, the init initializing curried add with 20. And then we print out A, we print out B, and then we call A with 30 and B with 40. So now what I ask you is try to figure out what is the result of each of these four things. Uh, maybe pause the video and try to answer that. Okay, so first one, what we did, this is the, the solution. And let's, let me go through why it's this. So what we do when we call a function is we take the arguments that were given and replace them by the parameter in the, in the function declaration. So in this case, this is the function declaration. What is the body? The body is this. So this is what's being printed here on the right in blue, but we need to replace arg1 by 10. So that's why you have 10 here, and that's why you have 20 here. Okay, so I hope by now this is second nature to you. Uh, and finally, we do the same exercise where we pass um, 30 to A and 40 to B. So A is this and B is this. Again, we take the body uh, and we replace arg2 by 40, by 30, sorry, by 30. So that means 10 plus 30. And this, that's why we get 40. In the second example, we have plus 20 and 
by arc 2 becomes 40, so 20 plus 40, 60. Okay, that's what we get. That's why we get the second, the the fourth uh, output. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk a bit about. We're going to start learning functional patterns. These are very important. These are uh, basically fundamental techniques when you're learning how to do uh, functional programming. All about recursion and operating and manipulating um, recursive data structures, such as list. Okay, have a good one.